Hello, it's been a while since I've done a video, but this week the review into Safeguarding Adults Review into Walton Hall um, has been published. I say the review has been published, an executive summary has been made available. Um, Walton Hall was an independent hospital run by Signet um, up in the northeast, um, and there it came to the attention the Safeguarding Adults Review was commissioned following a BBC panorama that exposed the abuse of patients at the hospital. Um, the panorama aired in May uh, 2019 and at the time there were 13 people living at the hospital um, and two had recently left. The panorama was horrendous um, as so often in this country we appear to need to rely on investigative journalists to actually um, shake people into action and see what's going on. There have been a couple of reviews by CQC as to why they hadn't spotted the abuse. There have been a um, number of other independent investigations, we're told, in the in the summary, um, all of which were shared with the review team, bar the Signet one, because of um, criminal prosecution. Last November, I was in court where nine people were charged with um, ill treatment or willful neglect of an individual by a care worker. They all pleaded not guilty and the case was referred up to Durham Crown Court and they're all still awaiting trial. So there is a limit to what can be said um, because of an active um, court case. So I'm also going to be careful about what I say. Um, and instead, I figured what I would do is just highlight um, the Safeguarding Adults Review, as is so often the case, I found a bit frustrating. It feels like we have, we know all of this. There is isn't, there is very little new. And to be fair, the authors acknowledge that there is very little new in their report. They refer to Walton Hall as a window on the system, but it's kind of like, I don't know how many more windows into the system we need. Um, but there we are. They also talk about national system findings uh, that are required to enable change. Um, which I think is grossly optimistic because I think if there's one thing we absolutely do know is that national findings don't lead to any change. We have reports and reports and reports, reviews and reviews and reviews, prevention of future death reports, uh, safeguarding adults reviews, serious case reviews, uh, very few um, criminal prosecutions, but we absolutely understand how abuse happens. We understand why it happens and we know that hospital environments and so-called assessment and treatment units are not safe places for learning disabled and autistic people to be warehoused. We know this. Um, the review talks says that it will look at both why this keeps happening, why people remain um, keep being sent into hospital and um, the failings once they're in there. With Walton Hall, we know that there were 13 people who lived there um, and their care was commissioned by 10 different CCGs from across the country. I mean, it's bad enough that you're sent to hospital. Uh, it's even worse that you're sent miles from home um, and you're sent there by commissioners who seemingly had very little awareness of actually the quality of care that was being provided. Um, but anyway, I've been banging that drum for far too long. So the executive summary of the report says that there are seven uh, systems failings um, found at Walton Hall, which are actually national findings. Um, I'm just going to list them. They group them around four things. They group them around achieving alternative models of care, specialist hospital closures or lack of them, um, effective safeguarding processes or lack of them, and advocacy or lack of advocacy. Uh, I'm adding in the lack, but really, um, I think it's fair. I'm just going to read the seven findings that they found. Um, and they do acknowledge that all of these, whilst they're identifying them as separate failings, actually overlap each other. Um, and obviously the um, experience for people then is far worse um, when you have numerous failings. So the first one they talk about is a lack of standards or expertise requirements for provider-led safeguarding investigations. I'm just going to read them. I'm not going to comment. Um, the second one is an absence of a sustained relationship of trust with a professional for each individual in a specialist hospital. That is a prerequisite to effective safeguarding responses in such settings. So what we're talking about is people warehoused miles from home in so-called hospitals where they don't have even a 
a single good relationship with a key worker or someone who is then able to support them through a safeguarding investigation. Um, earlier in the report, there is mention made that very little um, engagement has happened with the people who were at Walton Hall or their families due to the ongoing criminal investigation. And that just seems so typical to me. This the, the panorama aired in May 2019, so it was filmed before then. People were abused before then. And two and a, what we're coming up to, two and a half years later, um, still families and people themselves haven't been properly engaged with by the system that is apparently so keen to learn. The third finding, um, which I think we can see time and again, is an illusion of advocacy provision for people with learning disabilities and or who are autistic in specialist hospitals. And this is a real, this is a real issue. Um, and I think there are quite a few illusions that go on. I often talk about performative scrutiny where people appear to be investigating. If you read enough CQC reports, there's lots of people who always appear to be taking action. And here I think advocacy, I think people are probably just content like commissioners feel that advocacy is commissioned and therefore people are supported without any real um understanding or rigorous assessment of actually what that advocacy looks like the fourth finding is a need for closer working between cqc and local authorities to improve outcomes from organizational safeguarding inquiries in specialist hospitals and i'm not going to comment um but you'd hope it was happening anyway um the fifth finding is about gaps in guidance and funding responsibilities for emergency specialist hospital closures after organisational abuse or deregulation. I mean, we talk about specialist hospitals and we talk about uh, and people, you know, people would be let would be it would be reasonable for people to think that these people are desperately ill and need to be in hospital. But of course, the reality of what we see time and again is that there is no treatment being offered what these people are actually they're contained in hospital and they're contained in hospital for an absence of ambition and sort of better better support being available um so yeah i'm sure there are gaps in guidance and funding responsibilities when an, a specialist emergency a specialist hospital is closed in an emergency i'm sure there are but there are I would think bigger issues around why are we even commissioning these so-called specialist hospitals in the first place we you know we proudly say that we closed all our long-stay hospitals no we didn't we really didn't we haven't we are so far behind and i genuinely believe we are going backwards number six no clear national approach or governance mechanism to pull together building the right support all other relevant initiatives and learning into coordinated and adequately resourced action to transform care. Transforming care. What an absolute failure. Just an abject failure. We have known about abuse of this group. We have known about the failings of these hospitals for decades and transforming care was apparently going to sort everything out and really hasn't. Um, and that's not to say there aren't some um, pockets of really good work going on looking at what needs to be in place to support people to live their lives in their local communities. Absolutely happening. But it seems that we've made very, very little progress um, following transforming care. It's disgraceful. Um, and the last uh, system finding um, they reference is that there is no evidence base for what made a CCG effective at micro commissioning and quality assurance of services for people with learning disabilities and or who are autistic to inform ICSs, integrated care systems, what CCGs uh, are now, have been morphed into. I mean, if there's one thing we do know is that the system's well able to keep changing and restructuring and becoming something new without actually focusing on the people that it's failing time and time and time again. The safeguarding review lists, um, goes into a bit more detail about those, um, what it considers to be systemic issues and asks questions for the Durham Safeguarding Adults Partnership to consider and their partners to consider. They're worth a look. Um, it just feels a little too little and a little too late, really. Um, they optimistically say in their what next paragraph at the end of their review, addressing all the findings is vital. 
because improving safeguarding systems alone will not work if people are still being inappropriately placed in closed, their quotation marks, hospital environments. Equally, developing new and better options to allow people ordinary lives in places they can call home will still need improvements in safeguarding processes that can be genuinely personalised and empowering and affect sustainable change, as otherwise the new and better homes risk seeing the purpose of safeguarding activity ineffective or subverted. I mean, obviously a very safeguarding lens in the Safeguarding Adults Review. Um, I love their optimism that all the findings will be addressed and that's vital. I mean, we have, we just have, there's a whole library of these reviews. Uh, last year we had Corston Park, there's the independent review into Clive Treacy's Tre treatment. There are, Tony Hickmott's finally got out years and years and years. He's been warehoused in um, hospital. And many of these cases only come to light because of journalists. I mean, I, I would also point that out. What on earth has gone on with transforming care that so much of this activity we know about due to undercover reporters, we know about due to Panorama, we know about due to dispatches, we know about due to BBC Breakfast, we know about due to Sky News. Um, something really, really wrong, I think, with safeguarding. And it, it, it's more than just not having effective guidance. Anyway. That's me done for today. It's all right, it's such a long one.